Hello everyone this is Void Spirit. I'm here to bring you guys amazing fanfiction that you will surely enjoy. But before we start please subscribe and like the video for more amazing content. Chapter 6. Scarlet. Wow. I can't believe it. Fuse and Gazel were shocked. Rimuru indeed, has a daughter. Resembles him, but paler hair color as well as skin, more feminine in face with sharper eyes as opposed to her father's boyish beauty, with childlike eyes, taller and has, quite the figure, she wore a Taisho style schoolgirl uniform. A white cassode with blue flower prints, matching hakama and dark brown boots. Her long hair is in a high ponytail as she had done in life. The hakama of course, is tucked into her boots for convenience. Basically, Ichigo's entire closet comprised of ancient school uniforms he asked Shuna to make for her. It's the Taisho era style kimono and hakama to Showa era sailor uniforms, but cuter variants in his time. It was good that he reinforced conservative underwear production and Ichigo was no bad girl. To be honest, he was appalled at what young girls her age sees as fashionable in Tokyo most days that he reinforces good girls fashion here by that, he meant conservativity but Shein was a lost cause as no shirt will fully fit her that. Well. Yeah. It helps that Ichigo wasn't into that sort of thing, being a girl from an outdated small town anyway, wherein developments was still around early 2000s while Tokyo was already to the times, with tech befitting year 2027 when he died, Ichigo dying two years later at age 17. His girls in his town are no bad girls, in terms of style at least. Ichigo had asked. Why uniforms? To represent your new beginning here in Tempest as the young girl you should have been, but lost to you when the supernatural came to your life. Rimuru told her. You can live a normal life here. Nobody will force you to fight against your will by threatening you and those you care for anymore. Dot you will now choose when you want to, on your own terms. In regards to food chain, a subskill in Beelzebub where he can copy his subordinate's skills, he can also bestow skills suited to them. In regards to bestowment, the ones suited to her skills, are Shuna and Diablo in regards to unique skill, Monk of Destruction while he is suited to Monstrous Berserker. The Kijin males are suited for Ultra Speed Magicule Absorption. Then again, says everyone so he was fine with bestowing such abilities as it means they can survive parenthood if they get married. He also granted Holy Magic Nullification to all his people. When he had told them that in an assembly, his subordinates were over the moon that they could finally have children without worries of dying risks. Gabiru and Soka especially cried, as their father physically aged from stress just to have two kids. As for holy magic nullification, he hasn't forgiven what nearly happened. Everyone must have that skill, not just two people, being himself and Ichigo. They also have physical attack increase and pain nullification. In regards to advanced growth rate, he let Raphael choose who to give it to as he was too generous but you know, skills falling in wrong hands. Then regarding arts. Damn near everyone was suited to it. And for being the oldest in town, Rimuru didn't bother with the newcomer regarding a copy of Ichigo's arts. He is capable of it even if he didn't possess the skill by virtue of his experience in combat and magic. Well, I was shocked too but here she is. Said Rimuru, introducing Ichigo. Her name is Ichigo, my only child. Apparently, the world decided I need a successor so I gave birth to her before my evolution was fully completed. Because in the law of monsters, the stronger you are, the more having children became unnecessary through decreasing fertility until sterility occurs at one's peak of power. She's only a few days old so she's still a bit shy and getting used to people. Even back as a human, Ichigo was standoffish and distant from people due to being unfairly judged as a delinquent, a sukaban by simply having colored hair. Thus has no respect for adults unless earned by doing right by her and made no effort in changing herself for anyone, and lived life how she lived. Is that so? Well, nice to meet you Ichigo. Fuse grinned. I'm Fuse of Bloom and Branches Guildmaster of Free Guild for Adventurers. I'm doing business with your dad sometimes. He introduced himself. I am Gazel Dwargo of the Armed Nation of Dwargon, his only national ally by far. Gazel grinned. Ichigo put on an act as Rimuru suggested and merely nodded. This way for talks. The others are getting refreshments ready. The main question was what happened to the army that invaded Tempest. Rimuru was sure Vesta reported home in detail for transparency's sake, but Gazel was fibbing around Fuse. To conceal the fact that he massacred an army of 20,000. 
Then came a duke from Sarian dynasty who was Ellen's father who heard his daughter was abducted by a demon lord, namely, him. So yes, that had to be cleared up damn it, but an annoyed Ellen did the job for him. Sigh. That, and Ichigo advised him to handle Veldora's exposure with great care, as revealing him is the equivalent to revealing you have a nuke ready to fire at a moment's notice. They had to tiptoe over that politically. He took great care in that, while Ichigo read manga with Veldora. She has to look the part of newborn baby curious with the world when in reality, she was listening and understanding the politicking going on, while listening to her spirit's advice to make a politician out of her yet due to her future roles to keep their flourishing country peaceful. Because a city of monsters is already a big deal. Back when they were a small town, having seven a class monsters alone is enough to wipe a small kingdom on danger levels. Now that they're a city, that have to do politicking to be left alone and live their lives in peace. But alas. Humans. Rimuru sometimes understood anime he watched before his death as Mikami Satoru. That sometimes, humans are the real monsters and monster races ironically, are more morally humane. Proven by his subordinates. Ichigo found that to be the cruel truth, really. Because Shinigami were humans too before gaining power. Before Quincy got their power, they were human too. And before souls became hollows, they were human too. She was fighting and killing humans, technically, since she was 15 years old that she and her classmates turned fire-forged friends has PTSD by the truckloads. Then in came this little fairy who claims Tempest will be destroyed. Apparently, Clayman, the guy who started Tempest's current situation, proposed a Walpurgis with backup from Milam and Frey. It's a big deal. That when it's solely just them in Rimuru's office with Ramirez after talking about the Walpurgis? Ramirez, before we end this meeting, there's something I want to ask. Rimuru told Ramirez. What about? Ramirez asked, munching on Dorayaki. Ichigo, let them out. Rimuru instructed as Rimuru let out her spirits that got even Diablo wary due to their strength. Dot and their existence got Ramirez gobsmacked. Wah. I know every spirit in the spirit world. Who are they? Wow, even she was clueless. They are born when Ichigo was born. Said Rimuru. They are you watch the guy and Zanjetsu the girl. I figured as the spirit queen you oughta get to know them. Ramirez flew to the pair. The two spirits of light and darkness are so powerful, about greater tier divine spirit levels. They were witness to Ramirez christening the two newborn but powerful elemental spirits who may as well be demon lord levels around guy's strength. That was how powerful these two were, Ramirez determined. You know, when people visited my place in hopes of becoming shamans, mages using spirit magic or mortals hoping to be heroes by being graced by the light spirits, no dark elemental regardless of level ever graced themselves to anyone. Ever since the spirits, myself included, are created by the holy spirit of this world, she would tell them. The spirits of light do show up to a mortal once in a while worthy of becoming a hero, but darkness never showed up, let alone grace anyone other than me if only out of respect as queen. She said wearily. But for a darkness spirit to be born and already bound to crown princess is nothing short of a miracle and unprecedented event. She said. Will you two come with me to the spirit world for a short while to introduce you to your fellow elementals? Ramirez asked the former Zanpakuto spirits. The earlier the better, then I'll take you back here back to your host. If it's only that. Said you watch. Zanjetsu looked a bit more petulant though. Do I have to? We have to to be recognized as spirits of this world, said Yawach. If we don't have such recognition, it will be trouble for us both, when the time comes, he pointed out. Oh, all right. Zanjetsu huffed as the two spirits parted with Ichigo. Rather very reluctantly at that, by their amazement. But war is coming though. I'll bring you guys back in time, Ramirez promised. The day before Walpurgis, she reassured them. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. She chimed. Because some dumbass who became a newly minted demon lord before brought an army over to feel superior to everyone, it annoyed a senior demon lord whose country was just recently raised by the storm dragon centuries back thus she killed them all, prompting the host to enforce a law that only two attendants per demon lord ever since. She explained. So only two people, okay. And she was gone with the Zanpakuto. Due to who she is, Ichigo's coming as is proper. So one slot left. Her words echoed through magic as she was gone. Awkward silence. Chaos ensued from those who have no jobs yet. Is it always like this? 
Ichigo sweat dropped at the unbelievable show in her new father's office. Goodness knows not even subordinates can act wacky before their captains in Seireidi but this is kinda reassuring in some way that despite hierarchy, everyone is still free to be themselves here. Freedom. She likes it here. It's a whole new world for her, and a fantastic point of view. Her new father must be quite the leader that he inspired such loyalty and freedom in his own town. Like you wouldn't believe. Benamaru laughed. But still, we will gladly do anything for Rimaru-sama and Haim-sama, he told her reassuringly. Well, I'm glad that dad has people like you to make this possible. Ichigo said, eyeing the wackiness in the office with a wistful smile. A country like this is already a dream for most people, but we're lucky to have it for ourselves for real. Most government offices won't be this fun and carefree while still doing their jobs. I've never heard a free country like this happening. Benamaru and Sue have nothing to say to that. They know how most offices work, and they're the weird ones for this, but their princess likes it this way, finding it fun and free. And so, at the workshop. Hello there. What can we do for you guys? Kaijin greeted the royal slimes. I want a weapon for Ichigo to be forged, said Rimuru. For the coming Walpurgis, he said. Do we have enough Magisteel for that? I'll check our inventory, said Kaijin, looking at his records. Hum, we have enough for three swords as of now. Can I see? Ichigo asked Kaijin. I'm still looking at my world and what it has. What makes Magisteel so important if Dad requested it specifically? Oh ho. I'm glad you asked. It's a real treasure. Kaijin grinned as he had assistants bring out a crate of Magisteel, a glass looking ore that shines in rainbow colors. This material is very durable and heat resistant. In comparison to other rare metals that have at most a melting point around 5,000 degrees, Magisteel can withstand temperatures close to 10,000 degrees Celsius. He explained, taking an ore in hand. Furthermore, it has a self-repairing trait and is exceptional at inducting magical power, enabling any objects made from Magisteel to grow with their user. All these properties made Magisteel highly desirable for making high-quality equipment with magical properties. The sad part is they're so rare, as they are iron ores that mutated from exposure to magicules over the years. Dot and they're usually found in caves of powerful monsters. And this thing I'm holding now is worth about 5,000 gold coins in the market. Ichigo choked at that. Rimuru taught her how money in this world works. The exchange rate between units is unfair. Which is why he created the point system in Tempest, only using money when needed to purchase stuff outside. But still, stuff about Magisteel intrigued her. Magisteel exposed to magicules. Dot huh. Ichigo went to the crate. Dad, how much Magisteel needed for my sword you have in mind? She asked him. I'd say about 15 large ores, why? Rimuru asked her. About the size of his fist which is pretty large. Line it up for me, mister. Ichigo instructed Kaijin who did so. Next thing they know, Ichigo blasted them all with her magicules to cause yet another mutation they turned bright red while still glowing rainbow colors. The dwarves choked. As she turned them all into scarletite. Garm howled. A mythical ore passed down as fairy tale in Dwarven Kingdom. Scarletite? Rimuru frowned as Kurobe blurted out in intrigue. You can say that Scarletite is the ultimate form of Magisteel. Kaijin sputtered out. If Magisteel being found is 1 500th chances, Scarletite is a dream ore found in 1 50,000th chances due to magicule exposure needed for it to become one. He cried, sounding damn near hysterical. Scarletite responds exclusively only to their owners, and weapons made out of it is a hair away from mythical grade. Weapons made out of scarletite are the cream of the crop in legend grade goods. The mithril alloy Dwargon discovered as trash compared to pure scarletite. Oh, oh, oh okay. What about weapons already made? Rimuru asked him, anxious now as this is big. Same conditions should apply Rimuru Sama, by exposing already made weapons, they should evolve as well. Said Dord happily. To think scarletite is at our fingertips all along. It's not a dream for dwarven craftsmen anymore. He was in utter tears for it actually. Rimuru grinned at that while looking thoughtful. He bestowed ultra speed magicule absorption. Right. Attention all warriors of Tempest. He connected to his descendants who serves in the military. Out of curiosity, Ichigo accidentally discovered a big boon for us all. Using ultra speed magicule absorption, convert it into your own power, and induce evolution in your weapons from magisteel to scarletite. 
the ultimate form of magisteel that makes top tier legend grade weaponry. Needless to say, everyone obeyed that order in preparation for the upcoming battle against Clayman and his army. Now then, I need extra scarletite for Myron for her future jobs, Rimaru thought. I might as well. When the idea was brought up to them, Myron was in shock. Are Rimaru sama, for real? Myron choked out. Giving a scarletite weapon to me, just like that? Being king and queen of a nation is no joke, as you will soon be in a viper pit, given what kind of kingdom Falmouth is that you'll need all advantages you can get. Said Rimaru grimly. Yum cannot own one as he doesn't have enough magicules to bond with one. Mages can, but given the situation. What is scarletite? Yum asked cluelessly, and a hysterical Myron explained as being a long-lived witch, she knows its value and her master owned a scarletite ring once as her magic focus, but given its nature, Myron could not inherit it thus she put the weapon to rest with her teacher. Her master found it, and can only forge a ring out of the small amount she found. Small. And only magicule users can bond with scarletite, thus Myron would have her own scarletite weapon in the form of a pair of ornate teko gloves befitting a witch. In a style that can be worn in all occasions. She was in the moon for it. And now, Ichigo is under outfitting for her battle garment sewn up by Garm as Shuna is sewing Rimuru's. She felt the design is something out of cosplay. Dot it's a black leather outfit with add-on sleeves, belts made for the legs and a pair of boots. Even her hair ribbon is black. Her weapon is also being forged. All she can do is wait for it. In the meantime, she was sparring with Rimuru who has a copy of her skills to improve his shoddy martial arts. She starts on his level, before increasing difficulty. Because they heal quickly, lethal blows are perfectly okay as long as their souls aren't damaged. It's hard to kill slimes like them. You have to get used to the idea that lethal blows can and will always come. Ichigo would tell him. While it's okay for us slimes, it's not okay for everyone else to get lethal blows. You learn to have the reflexes and reaction time for it. Got it but dang, fighting you is like fighting Milam. And somebody is better than that kid, namely, anyone older than her. And in Walpurgis, to prove your worth as a demon lord, I can already predict you'll be made to fight her at her so-called playing pretend state while I face Clayman. Ichigo snarked. By the way, who's the other escort? It'll be Ranga. Said Rimuru. My first descendant. He will come with us. Everyone else has tasks regarding the war. Who's that again? The large wolf. Oh. Have you mastered Milam's technique? The dress change magic? Rimuru asked her. He had seen it before, before she left town for home, thus with great sage, taught the magic to Ichigo. Thanks to having a copy of unique skill. Predator, he gave it to her just so she can have the ability stomach to store stuff in. Yeah. It sure beats having to hide in a room just to get changing. Ichigo grinned. This upcoming Walpurgis. This should be fun. I can compare if demon lords are stronger than Shinigami or not by their feel alone. This, coming from the gal who fought the Quincy King. With help from poison. Without it we'd never win.